I'm Rebecca of Pocket Full of Posies. Today's video is kind of a general going through how I made and thrifted and thrift flipped and all kinds of costumes for a production of Rogers and Hammerstein's Cinderella Youth Edition. So I'm going to share how I did all of that and all in all we had, I don't even know. I counted all of the costumes, but I'm going to have to uh, do that in a voiceover because I can't remember off the top of my head. But it was a lot of different pieces. I know that I promised in my last video that my next video would be the Cinderella transformation costume. However, I don't have video of the transformation happening because Rogers and Hammerstein group has a lot of very, very strict rules about filming anything on the stage. So I'm going to get the actress who played Cinderella to come in and we're going to put the costume on her and do the transformation just in the studio which I think will be better and actually show how it all happens better than on the stage where it actually does look like magic but that will be a future video because I still have to coordinate that and get her to come in so let's get to the Cinderella costumes for this production we used 48 dresses 35 skirts 22 shirts or blouses, 7 pairs of pants, 12 vests or bodices, 15 undergarments, including petticoats, bum rolls, stays, etc., 7 jackets or cloaks, 43 accessories, hats, jewelry, hair pieces, aprons, etc. We had 40 plus performers ranging in age from 7 to 17. For the queen, I found a formal gown at the thrift store for $10 or $12, and I proceeded to alter the neckline, cut it down the center front to add a stomacher piece, cut off the sleeves, make new sleeves out of the mermaid style lower skirt, hand sew the original sleeve applique to the new sleeves, and add lacing strips and a modesty panel to the back. I made an 18th century style skirt, and I believe that skirt fabric was the only fabric I bought that wasn't thrifted or from my stash for this entire production. On to the step family. For the character of Joy, I made her day costume from stash seersucker and taffeta, and I used the Amalia jacket pattern from Scroot patterns. I used a thrifted corset style bodice to make her a pair of passable stays by adding twill tape boning channels and zip ties for bones. For Joy's ball gown, I made use of two thrifted formal gowns. The skirt was cut off of one. I used some of the beaded bodice as the center front bodice. I also used the Amalia jacket pattern for this bodice, but I used a simplicity pattern for the sleeves. I used the other thrifted ball gown skirt as an overskirt, cutting up the center back and adding elastic to the waistband so she could just pull it over her head and it was open in the front. I made a waistband for the organza skirt by using some scarf pieces that I had cut off of the bodice. I utilized a bit of satin from my stash for the bodice, added lots of trim. The braid was in my stash, but I did buy the lace. All in all, Joy's costumes turned out really well. For Portia's day costume, I used some stash satin to make a short gown. I used a free pattern and sized it up. I'll have a video about that soon, so stay tuned. Her skirt is made out of a thrifted sheet. A piece of ribbon left over from a previous project is used as a belt, and some stash eyelet lace was added to the sleeve openings. 
Portia's ball gown was made using the Amalia jacket pattern as well. Like Joy's ball bodice, I used the lining pieces of the pattern as my base and altered it accordingly. And I used the sleeve pattern for Portia's ball gown. This embroidered fabric was also in my stash and I had just enough. The chiffon layer is attached to the bodice and I took it off a thrifted formal gown. Portia's skirt is stash satin. On to the stepmother. For her day costume, I used black snail patterns, red and goat pattern, but I changed the sleeves and didn't make the collar. I was short on fabric since this was also a stash fabric project and it was left over from another project. Her skirt is made out of thrifted curtains. The scarf is also a thrifted piece. For the stepmother's ball gown, I used this simplicity pattern, but altered it a bit. I actually used the sleeves for this pattern on her day bodice and Joy's ball bodice. This ball overdress is made from some stash taffeta and stash black lace. The skirt is one that I made for a previous production, also with stash taffeta. On to the godmother. That same simplicity pattern was used for her overdress, but I didn't use the center front piece and had the side fronts lace instead. Her purple gown was donated by one of the performer's moms. For her overdress, I used stash satin and some glittery organza and some stash ribbon trim. Cinderella's ball gown was made using, you guessed it, that same simplicity pattern. And I will have a video out soon about how I made her transformation costume and ball gown. For Cinderella's wedding gown, I thrifted this wedding dress for $50. I didn't spend time making it historical looking because she only wears it in the very last scene and I was out of time. Overall, I'm super happy with the costumes I made for the lead women and we got a lot of comments about how great the costumes looked, so yay! The men wore things I made for previous productions or things that I bought and added trim to. My ensemble wore a mixture of thrifted items, thrifted items I remade into new costumes, things I made from stash fabric, and costumes from previous shows. I bought a decent number of cheap ball gowns as well, but I feel okay about it, even though they are fast fashion, because they will continue to be used or revamped for future shows. My budget was very slim, so I had to do what I could. My mom helped out by sewing a few peasant dresses from my stash fabrics too. I wanted the ensemble to be very colorful and I think I succeeded. My first time costuming 40 plus performers when the majority had two costumes apiece was exhausting, but also exciting. I learned a lot and I am definitely ready to take on the next show. After I sleep a bit and rest and you know. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and if you'd like to support the channel further, I have a coffee account and that is linked down below. Again, thank you so much and I will see you on our next sewing adventure. Bye!